Today we're talking about how to start an LLC in Ohio and we're gonna be walking through this checklist that you can see behind me that I'm casting from my computer and just giving you a full visual of what it takes to set up an LLC. And most importantly, what I want you to do is to avoid the LLC dumpster fire. The way that that happens is when you're not familiar with terms such as piercing the corporate veil, registered agents, commingling funds, pastor taxation, and how the LLC renewal process works. So we're gonna be talking about all these things throughout this video. And this is actually a video series because we're gonna break it down piece by piece here. Video one here is a checklist of setting up your LLC in your state. Video two is different options for LLC formation. So again, this is a playlist. So these will be up uh, coming after this video. We're gonna be analyzing going through the state website, an online legal tool or an attorney. And then video three, we're gonna talk about how to maintain your LLC. And we also have bonuses and a glossary of terms on this document. Uh, but to get to that point, what I think makes the most sense first is to educate yourself on exactly what an LLC does for your business. So why don't we open this up and start with that uh, uh, drop down right here. Now with the LLC, there's really two things that apply to it uh, that you need to know. It offers limited liability protection because you're creating a limited liability company and it also offers pass-through taxation. And we're gonna explain what both of those things mean, but I'd like to use an example of owning a coffee shop. So this is what owning a coffee shop looks like without an LLC. You can see the business owner in the middle. Well, they're attached to everything on the left-hand side. You have your personal home, personal car, personal bank account, but also you have the actual business, you have the point of sale, you have the business bank account, the espresso machine, the lights, all these things are directly connected to the business owner because they don't have an LLC. But what it looks like when you own an LLC that owns the coffee shop, this is very different. Now you can see that there's a division, right? There's the red line in the middle and you have your personal assets on the left-hand side and then there's the business assets on the right-hand side. This division here is known as something called the corporate veil. Now, if you recall, when you went up here, there was a term here called piercing the corporate veil. Why don't we talk about that right now? Because this is really, really important for you to understand. Now, if you were to be sued, let's say somebody gets hurt at the coffee shop and they go to sue you, what the attorney is going to try to do that's suing you is they're going to try to pierce the corporate veil. Basically, what that is, is they're trying to find cracks in your LLC so that they can erase this red division here in the middle. And then they can come after not only your business assets, but also your personal assets. A proper LLC will always have that division so they can't come after your personal asset. That's why it's so important. It's something that's so affordable that gives you so much liability protection. But what we're gonna be talking throughout this video series is where do those cracks occur? Like where are the missteps with setting up your LLC, the dumpster fire, so to speak. That's where things such as like not having a proper registered agent or commingling funds, not understanding the LLC renewal process, that's where those cracks begin. So we're gonna be getting into all that throughout this video. What I also wanna talk about is an explanation of pass-through taxation. This is just helpful come tax time so you understand what exactly happens with your LLC uh, when you're filing your taxes. Now, let's say that Acme Coffee LLC here, uh, they grossed $140,000. They had expenses of $90,000 and then a net income of $50,000 for your first year in business. What happens with that $50,000 of net income is it flows through to the business owner and the IRS is taxing the business owner. So basically those profits flow through to your personal tax return. Just wanted to make you aware of how that works. And later in this video series, we're also gonna be talking about ways that you can potentially lower your taxes in the future. And that has to do with filing for an S Corp designation, but that is getting way far ahead. But I wanna mention these things because this video series is not just about like setting up your LLC. It's about having a game plan for your LLC, not only today, but two years out, five years out, et cetera. So it's really, really important for you. All right, let's get into the checklist of starting your LLC in Ohio. Uh, number one here is just get this checklist for yourself and explore bonuses in the glossary. Uh, this is a Notion doc and there will be a link in the description below and also a QR code on the screen right now. Uh, but what this will allow you to do is it's got so many cool features to it. So this is one of them right here. This is an AI chatbot. And what you can do here is you can say how to start an LLC in Ohio. And you can put that in and it's going to pull the most recent information for you from our blog. And this is going to give you a step-by-step -step checklist of exactly what you need to do. Now, if you need to register an EIN, we're going to talk about an EIN and what that is in a minute, but this will give you detailed instructions on how to do that. So this is a great resource for you. Another one that's pretty cool is we have a free charity opportunity, which we'll get to in another video in this series. Uh, the yearly accounting calendar, super helpful. This is for 2024. It'll be updated in the future as well but these are important dates when it comes to uh, owning your LLC and as in terms of like your accounting calendar. Um, free CPA advice, we already talked about future tax savings. We're gonna get to that. 
Um, the glossary of terms here. This is helpful if there's terms that are being mentioned in this video and you're not sure what they are, they'll be in here. This is only gonna get filled out more and more because this is a living, breathing document that exists in the cloud. So I'm only gonna be adding more resources to this over time. Now, what you need to do is decide which route you wanna go. We're not gonna actually get into the weeds of this in this video, but I just wanna make you aware of like, you can go through the state site with Ohio, you can go through online legal services, LLC services, and you can also hire an attorney. The pros of the state site is that there are no upsells. The only thing that you may be asked is if you wanna expedite your processing and that'll be an extra fee but there's no other upsells. The downside is that the state website is a lot more difficult to use. There's not really great education on there. There's not additional services and features that you can select from, and they're only handling things on the state level. They're not handling things on the federal level, which we're gonna talk about in a minute. LLC services are great because they can help you with all those additional things. They can help you set up your business bank account, set up your EIN, uh, do business and permit research for you. But some of these things require an additional fee. So it can be a little bit more costly, but most of those services now offer a basic package, which is free plus state fee. Uh, the attorney route, this is typically if you have a more complex situation, and we're going to be getting into all the questions that you need to consider if you may want to go with a business attorney as opposed to going with an online legal tool or the state website. And as I mentioned, this is going to be video two, which we're really going to deep dive on that topic. This first video, though, I just want you to give you the foundational understanding of your LLC and what you need to know. Um, what you need to do next is decide on a business name for your LLC. Uh, my first piece of advice here is it's not as important as you think. And that's because you could have a name that maybe is just your name holdings or whatever it might be, but you can have a fictitious name or a DBA doing business as kind of depends on the state. And what that is, it could be the brand name. So the legal you know, entity might be something that's just your name, but then you can have a brand name that exists underneath it. So don't feel like you're naming your business forever when you're naming your LLC. But what is important is that you have a name that is unique within the state of Ohio. Now, if you click on the state directory link here for searching your availability of your name, what it'll do is it'll open up this uh, list here and we're gonna click on Ohio in the upper right hand corner here. And then we're gonna verify that we're human. <laughs> and then you can do a business name search. Now, if you do something like, let's say the Cleveland Browns, and then we search, what you'll find is there's going to be a lot of different names here and they're going to be taken. So you can't do that. But let's say you do something crazy like this and you do search, I wouldn't recommend naming it that, but you see there's no uh, data available on the table. That's what you're looking for on the Ohio State website. So that tells us that this is a unique name and that it's not already taken. So next what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually form your LLC. Uh, to get uh, to do this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna register the LLC name and then we're also gonna write the articles of organization and then file the articles of organization. With registering the LLC name, basically what that is, is sometimes you're not ready to actually file the articles of organization, which is the official documents that you need to file to set up your LLC with the state of Ohio. Um, registering it is basically saying that's the name that I want and I want to have control of that name. The best analogy I can give here is let's say you're not ready to build a website, but you buy the domain because you want that domain. That's what you're doing is you're registering your LLC so you can have that name. And then you're going to write your articles of organization. And again, we have a state directory here. And uh, basically what goes in your articles of organization are company name, primary business address, registered agent, which we'll explain in a minute, duration, purpose, management, tax treatment, and authorized signature. Now, when you click on Ohio here, we'll open this up. So let's go through this articles of organization here and just explain a few things. So there's your name to the attention of, address, et cetera. Um, but check here if you'd like to receive important notifications via email. Click here if you want to be signed up for our filing notification system. Probably a good idea to do both of those. This right here is type of service being requested. Most people are going to do a regular service, okay? Uh, so that's three to seven business days, it says here. But if you want to expedite things, this is where those upsells happen with the state. So if you're like, I need this within four hours, you can pay $300. Most people won't need that kind of uh, quick uh, service. Then what you're gonna do is check only one box. So articles of organization for domestic for-profit limited liability company or a nonprofit. Again, most people are gonna be running a for-profit LLC, but if you're a nonprofit, you can click here. So then what is the name of the limited liability company? That's the one that you research to see if it's available. Um, effective date, this is could be today or out in the future. Um, this limited liability company shall exist for, uh, this is optional, so I would just recommend not really um, putting in that information there. Then here what you can see is the undersigned uh, authorized members, managers, or representatives. So basically the owners of the LLC. Um, name of agent. Now, 
In Ohio, they call it a statutory agent. Other places, it's called a registered agent. What that is, is a third party that handles important documentation and communication within your business. Now, let's go back to the coffee shop example. Let's say that you were sued and the attorney is coming after you and they give you a service of process notice. Basically, what that is, is you need to show up in court. Your registered agent is a third party that exists within the state of Ohio. They have a physical mailing address there that is not a P.O. box. Those are the rules around it. You have to have a registered agent and they need a physical mailing address that can't be a P.O. box in uh, Ohio. They will make sure that you're getting that important documentation and then also making sure you're showing up for court. So it's like helping you to dot your I's and cross your T's as a business owner of this LLC. The other thing that's nice about having a third party handle this is that it gives you a little bit of separation from the business. If somebody were to look up your registered agent, they're going to see that person's information and address. And this is also really beneficial if you work from home, so you don't wanna have your home address put up. If you combine a registered agent with a virtual mailbox, you can hide your home address from some people who may be trying to look it up in the state databases. So what I'll say is the actual filing of the articles of organization isn't super complicated. You can go through the state website, you can choose to just download the um, PDF, fill it out, you can send in a check. We also created this handy LLC cost calculator which is in the bonuses. And when you put in Ohio, it'll show you that your state filing fee is $99, but then there is no annual fee or biannual fee for renewal, which is really nice. So your five-year cost just with the state is a simple $99, which is really low compared to most states. But there's no way of getting around that fee, whether you're going through the state website, an online legal tool, or an attorney. So then once you file your articles of organization and you assign a registered agent, again, in your situation, it is a statutory agent, um, you're gonna create and sign an LLC operating agreement. Uh, what an LLC operating agreement is, is basically a document that uh, lays out all the important information of your LLC, similar to the articles of organization, but it also lays out roles and responsibilities and also things such as like what happens if a member of the LLC wants to leave. So if you have a partner, operating agreements are super important. It's one of those situations where an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Because let's say you own that coffee shop, but then it franchises out into 12 coffee shops and your partner says they want to leave the business. Well, that could be tens of thousands of dollars in litigation. But if that's already spelled out in the operating agreement, that's where you don't even have to worry about the litigation because everything is already spelled out because you took the steps when you're beginning your business. Now, an LLC operating agreement is not required in the state of Pennsylvania upon a formation, but it's just highly advised to do so. After you get your LLC set up, you can set up an EIN. So why don't we talk about that for a minute of exactly what that is. An EIN is an employer identification number, and it's basically a social security number for your business. It allows the IRS to identify your business with that number. It's not necessarily needed day one, but I'd suggest just taking care of it now because it's not like there's an annual fee for having it. But then once you have employees and they're on payroll, you're going to need that EIN. If you're applying for a loan with a bank, they're going to look at that and say, okay, this is a little bit more legitimate of a business. They have an EIN. They have the information that they need. Um, but when you don't have those things, it makes you look like you don't know what you're doing. So just taking the time to set up this EIN right away is a good idea. The other thing you should consider is obtaining uh, business licenses and permits for your LLC. There's a helpful SBA resource here that you can read that's gonna go through different things. Uh, but what you need to know is that this can happen on the federal level, the state level, and the local level. Let me give you a good example. Let's say that you start a brewery and you're gonna brew beer, you're gonna serve beer, right? These are things that require licenses and permits, but you may need that on the town level of where that brewery is located. You may need things on the state level, and in some instances, you may need it on the federal level. Other examples are like you're starting a construction company, right? And depending on what type of construction is, again, it may need permits on the federal, state, and local level. One of the downsides of the state website is they don't help you with this. They just care about the state uh, side of things, but then they don't even help you with the business and permits. What I would recommend is you can call your town uh, county clerk, and they can help you through this, and they may have a advice on what to do at the state level as well. Uh, but again, these online legal services, they can do this research for you for a pretty low cost as well to make sure you're dialed in for your specific business category. What we're going to be talking about in the next video is the fees associated with setting up your LLC. We're going to deep dive into that more because there are additional fees that you can get into. And the nice thing too is that LLC cost calculator is embedded right into this Notion doc. We're going to go into the star ratings here of like going through the state website, an online LLC service, or a business attorney. And we're going to be deep diving on what those uh, star ratings, where they came from, and then why state websites become a pain. We're going to get into domestic and foreign LLCs, something that you need to know about today because this may apply to you in the near future. 
And then also the questions worth asking. Uh, most of this is going to be centered around like, should you hire an attorney, a business attorney to help you set up your LLC? So we're going to be deep diving on those questions as well. Again, I highly advise that you get this Notion doc for yourself because it's only going to get better with time with more resources. And in video two here, we're going to cover the different options for you between the state website, LLC services, and the business attorney. So I'll catch you in this next video.